Okay, in the last video, we got the track all ready to record. We looked at the gain. We know which channel the audio is coming in on. We know where the interface is and what track we're using from the interface to record from. In this session, we're going to look at the recording modes. Now, to access your recording modes, you right click on the little record button here. We can see there's a few. I'm not going to go through all of these because if I'm honest, they just, they then you're not going to use some of them. So normal is just normal recording. I will hit record, which is command and space or three on the numpad or F12 at the top of your keyboard. And we press recording there. And if I press F12 again to stop recording, nothing happens. If I press numpad three to stop recording, nothing happens. If I press command and space, nothing happens. In fact, Siri gets involved and we don't want that at all. So that is normal recording mode. If I start recording here again, it just creates a new clip that runs over the top, just like that. So that's your normal recording mode. When you press record, that is what is recorded. When you press stop, that is where it stops. Now the next mode I want to show is loop. Loop is the same as normal recording, but when it hits the end of a selection, it will loop back round. Something like this. As we go on, it'll get to the end of the selection and it'll loop back round. And it'll keep doing that until you press stop. Now I'll just demonstrate that normal recording doesn't do that. I'll make a little selection. We'll press record. It will record the selection and it will stop. Like that. So we've got normal. We've got loop. Let's have a look what else we've got. Destructive. Now this is interesting. I don't recommend using destructive. But what it will do is it will overwrite any file that already exists that you're recording on top of, if that makes sense. Let me show you. So we'll use this clip here. I'm going to record from there to there in destructive mode. Let's put that on. Right click there. Gives you a little D for destructive and we'll hit record now. And as it gets to the end, it's not in loop. It will just stop. It has. And as you can see, what it has done is it's modified the file I was recording over to render in the new audio. So that is, there's not two files there. That is just one new file. I'll show you again on here. So if I was in normal mode, let me go there, normal mode, and I'll hit numpad three, and it's going to record, stop, creates a new clip. Show you again, destructive over the same space. Let's just delete that. Keep that selection. Destructive mode. One, two, three. Tonk. And it re-renders this file with that new media inside of it. Incredibly dangerous. Incredibly dangerous. Can you undo? Yes, you can undo. But destructive mode, very dangerous. I've also, I tried to use it uh, during television shows to save time on rendering out a full 90 minute film or something, just destructively recording into some of it. Um, I found that I got clicks or pops and that's no good at all. So I don't trust this destructive. It probably works great. I just haven't had any good experiences with it and have only caused trouble for myself. Next is quick punch. Now this is my favorite. Now, the best thing about Quick Punch is that you can sometimes forget to press record, just like now. And I'll hit record. Oh, right. Okay, here we go. Take one, saying this, saying that. And we can stop with Quick Punch. And Quick Punch will be recording in the background as long as you do record something from the moment you started playing. So I started back here, press record here, captured that. But actually, it was listening the whole time. Now, Quick Punch has saved my bacon several times, um, especially if you're doing drop-ins. We can go here, we could just go, okay, drop in a take there, 
Now this will save as a new file. Come out. That's the great thing about quick punch is you can come in and out of record mode. I can drop in here, record over all this stuff and drop out again. And stop. Now quick punch will have uh, captured everything from that play point. It will have captured everything from there all the way through. Same here. As long as it was playing, Pro Tools was listening and even all the way to there. So my favorite is Quick Punch. I have uh, overlap layered editing on so we can see the files. It gives you this nice drop shadow. You can see what's going on behind it. And if I delete that, we can see what's behind it. It doesn't delete all of the media there. So that's Quick Punch, my favorite. Uh, and the other two, I'm just not gonna go into. There's, you, I don't think any podcaster will have any need to do Track Punch and Destructive Punch. Um, those are the four key ones you might be using. Normal is great, loop is good for looping, but quick punch is really the one you want on all the time. In my mind, especially if you're a podcaster or you're just doing some post-production stuff. So that is the four key recording modes for me.